Hi, I'm Jim Levinson. I'm the director of the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs here at Yale. Uh, I'm joined by three of my colleagues, all joint degree students between Jackson and School of Management. Jason, Emily, Brian. Um, I thought maybe we would start by having each of you introduce yourselves, say a little bit about what you were doing before you came to Yale, uh, and maybe even what you did this past summer. Um, and we'll take, uh, we'll do that and then maybe open it up to some questions. Sure. So uh, my name is Jason Lapidula. Um, prior to Yale, I was an infantry officer in the Marine Corps. Um, I served in the Marines for five years, did two deployments. Um, and while I was in Afghanistan, my last deployment, I uh, decided to apply to both um, SOM and Jackson, uh, mainly to focus on economic development in conflict and post-conflict areas. Um, so thankfully, um, got into both. Um, was at Jackson last year, um, at SOM this year. And between the two, I was in the Congo, uh, Republic of the Congo, um, working for the World Food Program. Um, in a field office, um, technically doing monitoring and evaluation, but um, at the end of the day, really did everything um, in a new field office that they had out there. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Schiller, like my colleagues, joint degree, um, and we're in our second year at Yale, uh, our first at SOM. Last year, we did the intro to Jackson. Before coming to uh, Yale, I was a bit all over the place, primarily in international development. Uh, I worked at the Scottish Parliament for an international NGO in Indonesia for a social enterprise startup in Kenya, and then uh, with the Peace Corps in Armenia, where I worked with a large foundation. Uh, over the summer, I was at IBM in their Corporate Responsibility Stakeholder Engagement Office, and in my time at Yale, I've been <coughs> focusing on the intersection of international development and business. Uh, unlike my colleagues, I actually came here only for Jackson and applied to SOM in my first year. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Chung. Um, I'm also second of three years in the joint degree program, like both of my friends. Um, so did Jackson last year and doing my first year SOM this year. Um, before coming to Yale, I was um, in the Middle East where I was working on a strategy and also policy research. So I had a joint appointment. So I was working for um, one of the royal families in the UAE um, doing internal strategy for them. And then another appointment that I had was um, working for the royal family's philanthropy in conducting policy research on areas like development and education. Um, and this past summer, I was working for an impact investing organization that was based out of Mexico City. So they focused on um, getting entrepreneurs ready for um, impact investments in Latin America specifically. And also um, we facilitated um, several um, investment opportunities for them as well. So I would love to take questions uh, as they come in. Um, maybe we would start though, as, uh, as we wait for the questions to come in, Maybe some of you or even all of you might talk about why the joint degree? What, why did that one make sense? Who wants to start? Perhaps I can start. Um, so I was like Jason, so I applied to both degree programs simultaneously. So my line of thinking um, was mostly based on the fact that I had been in the policy arena for you know quite a few years. Um, I've had exposure in, this, in international settings, and I also wanted to complement uh, my skill sets with a bit of business knowledge and also um, expanding my skill sets and knowledge in a very specific arena to a more broader, um, I guess, industries and areas. Um, and I also started seeing the applicability and then the importance of public-private partnerships. So that's a lot of what I've done in my previous position. So really engaging the private sector in um, carrying out some of the public sector projects. Um, and I could see some potential in that and I wanted to explore a little bit more. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to um, do an internship with an impact investing organization because um, you know many elements of that is working with governments to carry out certain um, 
certain uh, social projects and at the same time really looking for funds in a variety of different ways. And I feel like getting both degrees would enable me to have the kind of vocabulary and the knowledge that would be applicable in both settings. Um, and to see really, you know, where my life takes me. Um, I don't really know what's going to happen after I graduate, but then it also keeps um, options open in general. Uh, so my thought process was quite similar to Brian's. I was just a little delayed in getting there. Uh, I originally um, had been working in international development and seeing how inefficient funds were allocated and distributed in that field. Um, and I thought there must be a better way. I worked with some social enterprises and some of these more innovative models um, and really became passionate about this opportunity and all the innovations that were being done. Felt like I wanted to go back to grad school and, and learn where I fit in and, and how to best be part of future looking solutions. Um, for me, grad school was originally uh, going to be a get in, get the skills, get out. So uh, one of the degrees I was looking at, for example, was a 13 month intensive. Um, I wasn't thinking about community or any of the things that I now value so much about my time at Yale. Um, and when I landed on Jackson, what actually convinced me to come here, other than the opportunities and all of the um, different benefits from being on this campus, was this community engagement uh, that I heard, heard from current students was so important to their degree experience. Um, and I thought, because Jackson is this kind of choose-your-own-adventure type degree, there's only three core courses. The rest of your courses you can take at Jackson or at any of the other schools on campus that I could come and get the skills that I needed and really pick my own course. And like Brian, I wanted to gain the fluency in business language. And I thought, OK, I'll take the classes at the business school and really build my, my skill set and my fluency. And I'll also have all of the Jackson resources and take the classes there that are really in my interest. Um, and very quickly into being on campus, I realized that that was not really reasonable uh, in that I was starting from scratch with some of my skills development. And by trying to use Jackson to build one skill set, um, I was kind of missing out on some of the best aspects of both. And I really wanted to be part of both communities because community became, is still one of the things that I value most about being here. So I ended up applying to SOM very quickly into my first semester on this campus um, in order to get both skill sets, like Brian said, and, and experience um, both of the, the degrees. So I might come back to you, Jason, in a little bit. One of the questions uh, that came in uh, asks, you know, do you recommend starting in one school versus the other? Um, Usually, students who apply jointly uh, and are admitted from the get-go would start at Jackson. But it's not at all uncommon for a student to start at Jackson and then apply to SOM. But the other way goes, too. We have students who start at SOM um, will decide, having been on campus, to then apply to Jackson. And in those cases, the student starts, obviously, at SOM. And then, uh, and then joins us at Jackson. So it can go both ways, um, but I'd say most students who s apply jointly start, uh, start at Jackson. Um, there's another question that came in. It's addressed, uh, addressed to you. Uh, and it says, each of you comes from a somewhat impact-oriented background. Uh, do you see your futures in the private sector or in the public NGO or multilateral space? Um, so maybe hear from you, and then I'll, I'll weigh in on what the data seems to show for the students who do the joint degree. Sure. Can I address part of that other question as well? Absolutely. Um, so so um, in terms of starting at Jackson or SOM first, I sort of uh, had the same idea. I wanted to start at SOM. Jim convinced me to start at Jackson, and I think <laughs> it was a good idea that I would repeat in the future. Um, and that again, that comes down to what Emily's talking about, um, about community, and then I think just framing um, the, the learning in a much broader sense. So at Jackson, you're able to take um, a wide range of courses your first year, um, and that helps define the problem set for you of what you want to go into in the future um, and what you want to focus on uh, with your time at Yale. Um, SOM, um, I'm actually, I'm really uh, enjoying the core curriculum um, as much as that might sound weird, um, <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, um, you don't have the flexibility your first year. That's just a fact. And so being at Jackson first, I help. I think helps you really define 
um, the problems that you're trying to solve um, as you're moving forward. Um, and then for the, uh, for the second uh, portion of that, so I see myself um, likely in the uh, public sector in, in some capacity in the long run. Um, I kind of, I'm willing to take a bit more personal risk, I'd say, than most people. And so um, I would really like to, um, in whatever capacity that is, um, try to make the most out of the um, international focus of the Jackson degree, um, really looking at post-conflict areas, um, which seem to be, um, you know, the, the jobs when you're looking at it seem to, you know, come through government, through the UN, um, et cetera. Um, yeah, I love the way you just explained that about developing your problem set in the first year at Jackson. That rings true for me completely. And something that I've become really fortified in my thinking while I'm here is staying in an impact focus in the future. Um, even if I go private sector, it would need to be in an explicitly impact-driven mm -hmm. role. Um, so, for example, in CSR or an impact investing arm of an investment firm. Um, I see myself at that intersection where those two areas um, overlap. Uh, maybe in the private sector, maybe in the nonprofit sector, <clears throat> but certainly continuing to be impact-driven. I like this panel because I feel like we have a bit of diversity um, because yeah. um, I'm a little bit less like both of you. So I am transitioning completely into private sector at this point um, because I want, I want the full experience. And I think in the long term, what I'm seeing myself um, as is I'm, I'm definitely, and I think in the long term, I'm interested in um, looking into the philanthropic sector as well. And I feel like that is the sector that sort of bridges the public and the private as well. But um, I think in the short term, I, and I'm positioning myself to go into the private sector because I just have not had that experience. Um, and I think being at SOM is great because you're also able to, um, you know, have those kind of opportunities and think about what paths that you want to take. But then at the same time, you know, I think we have, you know, a very close community at Jackson where, you know, I hang out with Emily and Jason and we have, you know, similar passion for um, impact, but then I think we all approach it in a different way. And with a little more years of um, watching uh, our, our students, it seems to me that there's a lot of fluidity. Um, people come out and kind of know where they want to start, but what I've observed over the years uh, of the Jackson students, and this is certainly true of the joint students too, um, they might start in the private sector and then move into government, move in, into NGOs. Uh, some people do it the other way around. Uh, they'll start uh, with an NGO or start in government, go into the private sector. There's a fair amount of going back and forth. So another uh, question that came in asks about the support that the Jackson Institute might provide um, and then also asks, uh, as a new school, you know, is that a po being, a, being a relatively new school, is that a positive or a negative? Um, in terms of the support, Jackson tries very hard to support uh, all of the students who are admitted. Um, we're not quite at the point where uh, everybody is fully supported, but we are closely, closely getting there. Uh, so I think that's probably one difference, you know, quite frankly, with, mm -hmm. with the School of Management, but we're smaller. Uh, most students receive um, tuition waivers, uh, either partial or full, and a number of students also uh, receive uh, pretty generous stipends. So there's a lot of financial support uh, for uh, the Jackson students. Um, you know, Jackson is transitioning to become Yale's first new standalone school in, uh, well, actually since the formation of the School of Management. And I'm not sure about this, but I think it might only be the, the second time uh, in a century. So this doesn't happen a lot. Uh, that said, Jackson's not brand, brand new. Uh, we've been around now for about nine years. Um, I think the fact that we are relatively new has been a plus because we've been able to, to design a school and a program um, from the ground up. And for example, we've been able at Jackson to integrate practitioners into our curriculum from the get-go uh, in what I think is a, a pretty creative way. Uh, we've been able to fashion our classes, joint degree and sole degree, um, 
you know, in, in the ways that we really want because we didn't inherit a, a previous model. So uh, I, I think it is, um, it's an advantage, quite frankly. Um, someone asked how important it is to have professional international work experience coming into the joint degree program. Uh, from an empirical standpoint, um, pretty much everybody who comes into the joint degree program has work experience. Um, and then it's a little less obvious whether that work experience is always international. It's not. Uh, sometimes people come in, they're interested in international uh, work experience, but they've worked you know, in their home country. Might be the US, might be others. Um, yeah, do you want to add any, anyone want to add anything to, to that? Well, I think expecting students to have work experience um, before coming to this program, I think it makes sense after having been in the program for a while, um, because um, this is, a, I mean, this is a graduate degree program, but at the same time, it's quite professional in nature, and that means that our backgrounds also contribute to the diversity of um, learning for not only yourself, but also for your classmates as well. And I think this has been, um, I think, one of the strongest learning points, personally, where um, when people come to bring in their own work experience and how they've approached um, similar and different problems, and I feel like that is when value is really created. Um, and I think that is something um, you can't really create or you can't, you can't really come up with that having you know, no work experience. So I think that it makes a lot of sense personally. Uh, here's a question actually directed to Emily or others. It asks, can you talk more about why uh, I should also get a degree from Jackson when SOM has a reputation for being social impact? Yeah, um, so I think this comes down to a structural question as well. So the way that SOM organizes their curriculum is um, rigid, the way that most, almost all MBA programs will be. You have a core, so most people during their first year are taking very limited electives. And in your second year, you also are kind of limited by the system. So a lot of the courses you are taking are designed to have all of the graduates walk away with the same level of fluency in certain um, business skills. And then you can take some electives on top to really find your niche. Whereas at Jackson, you only have three required courses and you can really ex expand your niche um, and what your area of interest or research interests are. Um, so while SOM has this reputation, and that's correct, SOM for me, one of their value added was was this reputation um, and society uh, is taken very seriously here. The motto is um, preparing leaders for business and society. Uh, at Jackson, you can really explore where your interests lie and go very in depth in a way that um, SOM is not designed to be. I think recognizing what these two degree programs are and how they're designed and what you're going to get out of them is important and whether each one is right for you. Um, for me, I wanted both of those things and I couldn't get one from the other. So kind of sitting down and saying, what am I really trying to get out of this that is more than signaling, but actually skills development and expertise development is important in deciding this through this process. And uh, someone says, asks, uh, Jason, how much emphasis is there on cross-sector collaboration? Yeah, so um, I think the way I would frame the answer um, it's kind of similar to, to the, so SOM has a new dean, um, Kerwin Charles, and uh, I was fortunate enough to um, hear him speak. Um, and essentially, um, someone asked the question, you know, how do you um, see this business and society thing, like Emily said, um, sort of permeate through um, both, both people going to the private sector, people going to the public sector, and people doing, you know, um, nonprofit um, sort of NGO stuff. Um, I guess that's more than a both. That's like a three things. Um, but um, essentially what he said was, you know, um, I don't necessarily care which sector people go into. I want to make sure that that person in that job, mm -hmm. whatever it is, um, considers this business and society thing um, more so than the people, you know, coming from Harvard, coming from Wharton, et cetera. Right. And so um, it's, it's this thread that it doesn't necessarily matter which sector you're going into, 
Um, I think it's it's sort of just a, a, a culture thing um, that hopefully carries forward um, when you graduate. Um, in terms of specifics with cross-sector collaboration, um, I would say there's there's a, a, a large amount of collaboration between um, Jackson um, and SOM uh, when it comes down to, uh, you know, looking for whatever jobs. And I think that's largely due to, again, um, SOM's sort of culture of, of both being uh, sort of the most globally minded um, business school um, and also having this um, business and society um, idea. So here's a question directed to Brian. Uh, it says, Brian, I'm interested in climate change and come from the philanthropic sector like you. Can you talk more about intersectoral problem solving? Um, is that, well, I can answer that in two different parts. So I could answer that from um, my personal experience and also um, things that I have witnessed at Jackson. So I know um, in my personal experience, um, I found that there's a lot of different people working in different sectors don't know how to work with one another. So I think that could be from the fact that they come from different backgrounds and a lot of different values, definitely. And, but I think most of all, um, there is this misalignment in how they should be strategically positioning themselves to work together for a common goal. And I feel like that is something that is quite obvious, but people actually don't know how to do this. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I was quite curious to learn about. Um, and I think we talk about diversity a lot, and I feel like when we talk about diversity, we mention very specific things that sort of feed back into that system. But I feel like diversity is also, um, it could be translated into you know creating something from from things that people bring together in one place. And it's I think that's also very innovative. Um, so I think, um, that is something um, that's really difficult to do, um, mm. and it's something that I also personally wanted to do. I know how to do better, um, and so sort of segueing into Jack um, Jackson and SOM um, at Yale, um, I found that there's been a lot of opportunities in which you could sort of experiment doing things like that. So um, the the classes that I took last year um, sort of reflected that point. So for example, I took a class on global social entrepreneurship, which is um, a, it's an experiential course where you work um, with people from a diverse backgrounds. So you have people from the public health school, you have forestry students, SOM, Jackson, and then you work with um, a social enterprise in a specific country, and then you deliver a project together. And I think that brings together not only um, expertise that each one has in their respective backgrounds, but also different ways of problem solving. So I remember in my team, um, we had people, um, people who came from the private sector. You know, I came from a very specific, you know, government sector, and we had people working a variety of different jobs. And I found that, you know, our process of solving the same problem or even looking at the same problem was, you know, vastly different. And I think that's something. That was very challenging. I think it was not easy to resolve that. Um, but at the same time, resolving that, or at least trying to resolve that, it is in itself a learning. And there are different ways to experiment with um, working with different um, people for, who come from different backgrounds at Yale. And I think um, that's one of the strengths that the Yale, over, Yale overall has is that um, it's a very integrated university. So just because you're at SOM, you're not just limited to being around SOM people or working with SOMers. Um, you also have access to a lot of different schools and people from those schools. And I think um, that's what really facilitates this, uh, I guess, pursuit for finding an answer to how to work with people from different sectors. And I found that to be um, not necessarily very difficult, which is something that's a bit reassuring because that's what I came here to do. Yeah, I think one of the things that Brian mentioned that is worth emphasizing is the ease of taking courses throughout the university. Uh, so I can speak for the Jackson students. And I think it's fair to say that while many, most of their classes are at Jackson, uh, all of the Jackson students take courses at other places. 
Uh, even the non-joint degree students, you know, many, many of them will take a class at SOM. Uh, many SOM students take courses at Jackson. There's a lot of integration also with uh, forestry and environmental studies. Uh, students take courses at the uh, Yale Law School. And Yale's done, I think, just a great job, I'm proud of this, of building bridges uh, between our different professional schools. So you really get the benefit of the entire portfolio of professional schools while you're here uh, at Yale. Brian, you mentioned the global social enterprise uh, class. Someone asked what global experiences are available to SOM, Jackson, joint degree students during the academic year. Maybe you can talk about during the academic year. Um, the summer between, or the summer after the first year, which is usually at Jackson, uh, almost all of our students, uh, well, all of our students work, and many, many of them, most of them work uh, overseas. But that, I don't know that that's what they mean by the academic year. So during the academic year? I think I can talk about, for example, GSE. So GSE, um, every year, so it's it's a joint, I think it's a cross-listed course between Jackson and SOM means that, you know, students from both schools can get credit for it, but that doesn't mean that if you're in, for example, a public health school, you can't take it. You can take it. Um, so you would travel to a country and you would be working with a client in that country to do a specific project um, in their processes, in their strategy, or in their finances. Um, so you are working with them for the rest of the semester, but then you're also traveling there. So um, I'm also thinking about what other international experiences do we have? Yeah, so um, off the top of my head, um, although I think uh, whoever asked should probably um, fact check me on the SOM website. <laughs> um, SOM, yeah, has um, a large amount of, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a part of, of the curriculum. You have to do some sort of international experience, um, whether that's GSE, like Brian mentioned, um, or um, there's, uh, there's another program, I think they're, they're called the, their TREX, where they do, uh, I think, a week. Um, or two in another country, it's more of a learning experience. Um, I can tell you what I'm planning to do, um, which is um, what some people do, uh, not many, um, going abroad to study at, a, um, at another university um, that SOM has um, made a connection with. Um, so you can do that for half a semester. I think you can do that, uh, you can do it for a semester, half a semester, et cetera. Um, those are the things that come off the top <coughs> of my head. So two things to add to that. Uh, one, at, from the Jackson side, there are spring break trips. Um, there's a, actually, Jason's the organizer, so maybe you should talk about that one. Um, but the other one is that um, I went to Armenia last year for uh, an event. Uh, it was part of my professional development, and it was also um, an event that I, I helped found there. And Jackson supported me in doing that. Uh, I went for a long weekend, so I missed a few classes. And my professors were very helpful in uh, <coughs> helping me make up my work um, and allowing me to do that. Uh, so there is an allowance, and maybe Jim can speak more to this, for going to international conferences if they are relevant to your professional <coughs> development on the Jackson side. And um, that trip was really wonderful for me because uh, I got to go back to Armenia and stay connected to something that I feel really strongly about and passionately about still. Um, and I also met some very interesting people on that trip. Um, so there, you know, there are like kind of the standard ways to do it, the classes that are in place, the trips and treks that are in place. And then there's also a lot of opportunity for you to really chart your own path, particularly at Jackson. And that's, again, one of the things at Jackson that I love the most. It's really designed for you to come here and, and explore the things that are important to you and not be traditional. Um, which is why coming with work experience is also helpful, knowing where your passions lie and how to pursue them. Um, but if you want to talk about... Um, yeah, so we there were two, I want to say there were two Jackson trips last year that um, were both not, um, so I want to preface this with uh, both, both trips um, weren't like funded by the university uh, or supported by the university. They were both internal to um, Jackson students, just self-organizing sort of. Um, so one was a trip to Israel, the other one was a trip to uh, UAE. Um, both um, were uh, on spring break and both um, had a, I would say, a healthy mix of like academic 
um, learning experiences, um, specifically dealing with policy, um, and then also just sort of fun, sort of wind down um, during your spring break. And SOM also has the travel built in to its program too. CNW, yeah. yeah. Uh, you haven't, because you're all first years, you haven't <laughs> done that yet. But SOM uh, also has a lot of uh, pretty cool travel opportunities. Yeah. Um, someone asked, are there logistical challenges with different semesters and class schedules merging together in order to make the joint degree work? I, I would probably say we figured that one out. Um, no, there really aren't uh, any huge logistical challenges there. We've done a lot to build, as I said, build bridges between professional schools, and I'd say the bridges between Jackson and SOM are as, as good as any. Um, someone asked, what coursework or extra acti activities do SOM and Jackson offer to help someone develop a career in impact investing? Mm. Uh, I'll kick that off we, uh, on the Jackson side, and you can all weigh in on the SOM side. Um, you know, on the Jackson side, a lot of our students uh, are, in fact, really interested in this, and we have uh, an entire course uh, yeah. fo focused on that, taught every, every spring. It's mm -hmm. a semester-long course. Employers? Yes. I was the course assistant for that. <laughs> so Emily was the course assistant, maybe. Uh, so, but there's, other, there's a lot going on at SOM yeah. in this space, too. Um, I don't know if any of you want to add to this. Uh, yeah, so something I'm involved in is called the Mint. It's an impact, impact investing competition hosted by Wart, Wharton and funded by um, a large impact investing fund. You can Google it. It's M-I-I-N-T. So the way that that works, it's really fun. Um, you have a team of five, and uh, you develop an investment thesis, and then you act like you are an impact investor, and you go and source and find um, an entrepreneur. And then you pitch at a competition um, as though you were an investor, not as the entrepreneur, but as the investor. So you do your due diligence and you create a pitch for why they should invest in them. And this year, the price has been um, increased to $100,000 potential for the winner. Yale, as the Yale team has actually won two years in a row. So there's a lot of pressure this year. Um, and I'm actually on a unique team. My team is focusing on economic development and financial inclusion. And um, in addition to me being the joint degree in the group, uh, also there is one Jackson student in the group who's a first year at Jackson. So of the five of us, two of us are Jackson affiliated, mm -hmm. uh, which is really fun. So Mint is a really cool opportunity. And then there's, there's a ton more competitions, um, classes. It's a huge, there's a lot of buzz on campus yeah. right now. Uh, I just also wanted to add, for example, um, when I was interested in impact investing overall, um, one of the resources that I really, really um, appreciated having is you know, the people around you, because there are so many people at Jackson and also SOM who are interested in the same subject. And some of them have already gone down that path. So for example, I had last year a mentor who had, you know, interned and worked in an impact investing space. And I spent a lot of time talking about um, impact investing with her. And she was a wonderful guide um, in helping me sort of navigate this space and, you know, telling me about the appropriate resources to teach myself. Um, and I actually ended up working um, at organizations that she had worked in. So um, the, the network that you have, you're, that you're coming into um, is already, it already contains a lot of knowledge and information and then gets passed down to people. And I would say that's also something that you can definitely take advantage of. So for example, like, you know, Emily, having gone through Mint, and if you were to come into Jackson or SOM, you know, you know that people have similar interests as you do, and then you can also use them for extra information. Just a quick shout out about our career development office, particularly at Jackson. Your career development experience at SOM and Jackson are very different. SOM, it's more structured. There's just more data. There's more people. At um, Jackson, it's, it's one woman, but we're so small that she knows your career interests. And she knows all of the alumni. And very early into my time at Jackson, she proactively reached out to me and set up some Skype meetings and was like, here are the alumni who are interesting to you. Um, so it's just, it's a huge advantage when it's so small that it can be personalized like that. And there are alumni working in particularly impact investing in that space right now who are um, at the early stages or even later in their careers. Yeah, and I would add or just clarify, uh, 
At Jackson, we do get a lot of help uh, on the career side from our from alumni, and it's Yale alumni in the large. It's not just uh, Jackson alumni. Uh, someone asks, is there any focus on Africa uh, and policy issues in the region at Jackson? Uh, the answer to that one is absolutely. Um, it's hugely important. A lot of our students come in with interests in, uh, in uh, around economic development. Um, Jason and Emily, uh, I, I think, included. Uh, we have multiple senior fellows um, who work in this space and uh, teach courses. We're about to announce a new senior fellow who bridges the private sector uh, and Africa and will be with us for the upcoming year. Um, Harry Thomas, former US ambassador to Nigeria, Zimbabwe, many other parts of, of the continent, uh, teaches at Jackson. Uh, so there's a lot going on. I would also add, uh, if students are from Africa, we have special resources to uh, fund your time at Yale. So I would encourage you uh, to apply. Um, I'm reasonably confident if you're from Africa and you're admitted, um, there would be a uh, full ride. Um, someone asked if might, I might be able to talk a little bit more about the typical backgrounds that joint degree students bring. Uh, I can talk about it on the Jackson side, and what's kind of cool is there isn't a typical. Um, the common denominators of, of the students on the Jackson side, um, most of them have, well, all of them have worked, and because it's such a small class, uh, most of them have worked in pretty complicated places. Um, you know, Jason was in Afghanistan, Emily was a PCV, Brian um, was navigating the UAE. Uh, that diversity um, is, is pretty common, actually. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything more about uh, the backgrounds of, of your classmates, just a little bit. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, so I guess internal to me, um, I majored in music and then joined the Marine Corps and was an infantry officer. <laughs> um, so um, I think that generally covers a pretty wide range. Um, so if you are worried about your undergraduate degree, um, I guess don't be. Um, I, I would second that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, someone asked about the question here is about majors. Um, we, I don't even know if we look at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like some of my best friends at Jackson, like off the top of my head, um, I tend to hang out with two in particular, one who did climate change research um, at, a, at a climate change research organization, um, and another who worked on Wall Street. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, th I think that speaks to the, the wide range and the fact that we are so close knit. Um, uh, speaks to sort of the culture at Jackson. Yeah, and I, I think that Jim saying there is no typical background is correct. I think a common denominator I've seen in, in our year, and I worked with the Accepted Students program last year, so I saw a lot of the first years go through their, um, their admissions process, is it's generally folks who don't fit a mold. Um, people who have charted their own course, even if they were on Wall Street, they weren't living the typical Wall Street life. They had passions and they had interests and they pursued them in ways that um, were non-traditional in some way. It's a lot of people who aren't afraid to take risks and have done interesting things that are unique and their career cannot be replicated um, and doesn't look identical to any other person's. Yeah. And I just wanted to also mention that like, I mean, for us, we would we would be excited to have an engineer in the class. We yeah. would be excited to have people who are currently not represented in the joint degree class. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, um, don't be dissuaded by <coughs> looking at the kind of people that we are. Yeah. Um, I would say you should be encouraged by the fact that if you are different, then you are bringing something different. And that is something that is tremendously positive um, to the community. And that is something that we really want to emphasize. And I think, you know, I'm just personally excited to have someone who is, um, who, whose background is just so unique. And I think that in itself is a strength. I, I would add, looking at outcomes, that the joint degree students have had just phenomenal options uh, when they leave with both the Jackson and the SON degree. Um, they've gone on to do some really, really interesting stuff. 
Um, someone asks, and any of you could take this, uh, can you talk more about how you've utilized the flexibility in the Jackson curriculum to pursue your unique mm -hmm. interests? Um, yeah, so I think like the, the crux of it comes down to sort of structuring your mm -hmm. time here. And so I've taken that um, in two directions. So um, I see SOM for me in particular, I'm looking at um, the technical, uh, more technical courses. So um, taking a court, taking more <laughs> of, the, of the quant heavy curriculum at SOM and then getting uh, more of the more of the policy focus um, at at Jackson. So in terms of like my my unique interests, you know, taking taking, let's say, economic development, right, focusing on the quantitative aspects at SOM while um, recognizing sort of the strategy and policies of, of, S, of um, economic development in uh, the context of um, sort of this <coughs> conflict thing, I think really bridges, um, it bridges stuff from economic development, national security, um, sort of like international law stuff. Um, and so having that flexibility of, of Jackson um, is, is really, really helpful for that. Mm -hmm. Um, outside of class as well, this campus, and particularly Jackson, is like an intellectual candy shop. Especially in the fall when we have the World Fellows here, there are talks pretty much every day from leading experts in various fields where they're just going to do an hour lecture. And you sit there and think, after I leave this campus for the rest of my life, I'm never going to have access to this much information without, I just never will. Um, so you go, I kind of burned out last fall, to be mm. honest, because I tried to go to all of the talks that interested me, which were almost all of them. Um, because you're just hearing these people speak who are leading experts in various fields, practitioners who've done incredible things, and you just want to hear what they have to say, even if it's not your passion or interest. Yeah. Um, so it can be kind of overwhelming, especially when you first arrive, because you want to take advantage of all of the opportunities here. Um, but you'll burn out quickly if yeah. you try to go to everything. <laughs> yeah, I want to also second that and say one of the one of the learning points from fall um, for I think many of us is that you're sort of forced to prioritize just because there are so many things happening simultaneously. You have academics, you have extracurriculars, you have all these talks. Um, but then I think by virtue of being a joint degree student, you have a little bit more leverage and free room to yeah. explore your options because you are spending more time at Yale. Um, and so for example, like I use my first year to sort of explore different options. And I feel like if you are in, um, you know, just one degree program that might be a little bit more difficult to do because you're only limited to two years. Yeah. But um, I thought that as a result of being a joint degree pro uh, program student, I felt um, a little bit more freedom in, you know, maybe doing things that I would not otherwise do or taking classes that um, sort of interest me that I have no background in but then still wanted to take. And I felt like that availability was you know, immensely helpful for, for me to make decisions that I am making right now. So someone uh, asks or states, I'm interested in cybersecurity and its implications on global politics and business. Are there resources or programs dealing with this kind of challenge? Uh, I'll take that one on the Jackson side. Uh, absolutely, yes. In fact, it's a big part of uh, our course offerings. Uh, at Jackson, we have three faculty members who really focus on aspects of this. Um, Ted Wittenstein teaches courses on this. Casey King teaches courses on this. Uh, Nathaniel Raymond um, teaches courses uh, on this. Uh, Ona Hathaway at the law school uh, does some stuff on this that many of our students take. We run a conference every spring uh, on issues around uh, cybersecurity and implica its implications you know, for just as you said, global politics. Um, I think it's probably time to wrap up. Uh, I'd like to conclude uh, by thanking the three students who have joined us. I'd like to thank all of you for coming uh, to the, the webinar. Um, and I'd encourage you to apply. I think that the joint SOM Jackson degree is a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, and I very, very much hope that we'll be able to welcome you to New Haven next fall. Thanks so much.